All right, JRP, welcome back to the gr Gridiron for another football season. How you feeling? Really good. Uh, super excited, and uh, we're ready to roll. Tell me a little bit what the spring was like now that you've had time to reflect. You obviously practice with your teammates, but yeah. you're, you're starting center field for yeah. baseball. Now that you've had a little time to reflect, what, what comes to your mind? Uh, about the spring? Yeah. Yeah, it was a ton of fun. Um, Every day I got to do what I love to do. I got to I got to go in the morning and I got to play football, and then in the afternoon I got to go play baseball, and I got to be around my buddies while doing it, right? My best buddies over here at football, my best buddies over there at baseball, uh, having the best time of my life, right? It's so much, so much fun uh, to, to, to do the things that I love and to be able to do them at the same time, uh, nonetheless, is was unbelievable. Um, and as I look back at it, man, it's it was a cool, cool time. And being able to do that spring game where you go from game to game, uh, probably one of the cooler moments in my life, uh, talking about my sports performance life. Um, really, really cool experience. Gus, you mentioned that you know Gus promised you, hey, you come here, you can play, fulfill your dream. Was this always something as a little kid you wanted to do, play two sports in college? I mean, take me through that as yeah. a kid. Yeah. Uh, I started playing baseball a lot earlier than I started playing football, just because there was no football league uh, for kindergartners. They don't want, they probably don't want kindergartners running into each other and banging heads, right? Um, but uh, I played baseball early on, all the way until second grade, and then in second grade I started playing football too. So from that moment on, I played everything that I could play, whether it was football, baseball, soccer, basketball, um, anything that I could do to be outside running around, I was doing it, right? I love to do it. <clears throat> but as I started growing up, man, I really started developing this love for football and baseball, and it became my dream. I want to play these two until somebody says, hey, man, you cannot play them anymore. And so uh, nobody said that to me yet. And so I'm continuing to live my dream and to, and to be able to do the things that I love to do, and I'm uh, going to be forever thankful for it. What advice do you give young kids? Because I know you're, you know you're teaching kids, and I'll never forget that Memphis baseball game and as you're leaving for football, and a lot of young kids are racing to you, and you're giving them high fives. I mean, you're inspiring young people, which I know is something that means a lot to you. What advice do you give young people when it comes to that? Uh, do what you love to do, right? I think a lot of people tell kids today in fourth grade, hey, if you want to go play collegially, you have to play one sport. I, I disagree completely. I think if you love something, do it. If, it, if you have fun doing it, do it. Um, and let the chips fall where they may, right? Look at me. I've, I've just been playing the two things that I love to play, and, and I've been blessed with the opportunity uh, to, to, to do a lot of really, really cool things at the college level. Um, and I think a lot of it's the same goes for a lot of guys in this room, right? We've all played sports growing up. Um, and I think today people are trying to get kids to specialize and do just one thing. But uh, if I had any advice, it would p to be, hey, go have fun, whatever that means. If it means go playing soccer in the street with two trash cans, I've done it. Go go do it. It was so much fun for me, and, and I think it would be fun for you too. And so um, that would be my advice. Just have fun doing what you're doing. You've been through a, a two coaching changes on each year, each, each your team. Darren Henshaw coming in to be the new OC over at football, now Rich and Rich Wallace over on the baseball side. How has that been working out for you with the coach, with the adjustments on either side of the, either sport? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so on the football side, Coach Henshaw has been awesome. He's been unbelievable. Uh, I've only been through a spring and a summer with him, and I've learned a ton already. Um, and I'm super, super excited to go through a fall with him too. Just the things that I'm going to learn and how I'm going to develop, I know uh, he's going to teach me a ton. Uh, Coach Wallace, uh, I haven't uh, got to, to really get after it with him just yet. Um, we've, of course, talked many a times and, and had some really, really good conversations, and we've interacted with each other a ton, and he seems like a great coach, um, and I know that he's going to be a great coach. Um, and so I'm super excited to, to get over there and, and, and chop it up with him some more. What have you learned from Darren? Uh, who played two sports here, ironically, just like you. He played, yeah. he played basketball. I don't know if he's brought that up he to you. Yes, for sure. Like, what, what have you learned from him? Uh, I mean, he's he, a lot of coaches, they can talk the talk, right? Like a lot of them know football. A lot of them can tell you about football, what you're supposed to do, right? But Coach Inshaw has walked the walk, right? He has, he has played in big games. He has played the quarterback position. He has had to throw a slant and get hit in the ear hole before. Like he, he knows it, right? He, he knows the position. He, he has done it before. And so <clears throat> when you have a guy like that that has done it before, you can kind of relate to him a little bit more, right? You can kind of understand like, okay, he did this too. Like he, he knows what he's talking about. And not necessarily that other coaches don't know what they're talking about because they definitely do. But um, I think there's a certain level of respect that comes with, hey, he's done this before too. <clears throat> What's the difference between the John Rice Plumley, the foot, the quarterback that we saw at the end of last football season versus the one we see right now? 
Uh, I think I'm healthy, right? I think that's a, a big piece. Uh, I, I think I got banged up a ton last year, and I think um, that's one of the main pieces that when Coach Inchall came in, he, he kind of hit me with. He said, hey, man, we're, we're going to protect you, right? And you're going to learn to protect yourself a lot better, too, this year. And uh, I said, man, that sounds like a great idea. Uh, and so – but he has also helped me develop as a quarterback, helped me develop as a passer, and the understanding of the game and the installs that he's been installing. Um, and with a combination of all those things, I think I'm a better quarterback than I was at the end of the season to right now. I think it's night and day difference, um, and I'm excited to put that on display. You you mentioned how because you you scrambled around a lot last year, sure. and so you, you mentioned about wanting to protect <laughs> to protect yourself. What's what's the biggest strategy to look into to try to you know limit the possibility of having to go to the backup? Yeah, I mean I don't uh, I feel as though I bring another uh, piece to the game, right? I think I bring another dynamic to the game with my legs, and that's something that I don't want to take away, right? I do. That's who I am. I'm really good at running and and uh, making people miss and and and. Uh, scoring touchdowns on my feet um, but it's not something that I want to necessarily rely on um, and when the step when when the pocket does break down and I have to step out every once in a while um, it's knowing how to protect myself a lot of times last year um, I went looking for somebody to hit in the head which was a little bit dumb on my part um, and it's something that I'm continuing to learn how to do is to, to, protect, to protect myself because I kind of get in a competitive mode of, of hey man I'm I want to go get everything done and kind of play this role of Superman, but I don't necessarily have to be that because of the guys that I have around me, right? And so um, it's something that I've learned how to do daily. And Coach Henshaw and Coach Malzahn are coaching me up on it as well. And so um, continuing to learn, and that's, that's the goal. What's the biggest thing that you want to nail down before the season begins? <sighs> I mean, I, I think there's not one thing that, hey, this is what – I want right there's not one piece but I think uh, the mindset of this team and myself specifically is to stack days right I want to be better uh, today's day three of fall camp I want to be a better quarterback day four of fall camp than I was today right and so um, I think that's the mindset of not only me but uh, the, my teammates around me too and so I think that's one of the things that um, is makes this team so special we want to stack days we want to continue uh, to hey how can I get better what can I do better each day uh, and when you have that mindset um, it makes for a pretty special team. You came from a elite conference. Sure. You now step up into an elite conference. Yeah. What do you tell perhaps your teammates that haven't made that journey about the difference, not to not to downplay the American, yeah. but the difference between that level and the Big 12 um, and the SEC? Obviously, as you said, the American's a great conference, right? We, we played great ball in it for a couple of years. I mean, we, that's a really, really great conference. Great teams, great competition. Um, but nonetheless, we're stepping into a Power 5 school. We're stepping into a huge conference that has really, really good teams in it. Um, coming from the SEC, I, I mean, I've, I've, I've played it, right? I've seen it. Um, and if I had any advice to the guys or if anybody that wanted to ask, um, I wouldn't try to downplay it and say that it's nothing new. I think there is a little bit of a step that comes with that. There's more eyeballs on you. There's a little bit higher caliber team, higher caliber players, higher, uh, not necessarily higher caliber coaches, um, but the execution, I think, might be a, at a higher level. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to put the ball down, and you got to play 11-on-11 11 11 football. Uh, and at some point, somebody's got to score some points, right? And so um, I would say to, to uh, if I had any advice to the guys, is just continue to do what we've always done at UCF with Mackenzie Milton and Dante Culpepper, Blake Bortles, and, and teams like that. They've won at a high level, right? And so we just want to carry on the, the tradition of winning at a high level. Is it the little things and maybe, not to say you're not focused on detail, but greater attention? Yeah, I mean, I think that, that that's what it comes down to. Uh, that's the key to football. I think X's and O's are great. When you have a scheme that makes it easy on you, that, that makes it extremely easy. Um, but it's all about execution. How, how well and how good can you execute at each position, at offensive line, at wide receiver doing the little things right, how to strain, at quarterback, understanding the, the, the little things of how to do a drop, who's supposed to get the ball, and getting, getting it to him on time. Uh, I think that's what makes you a good football team. And so uh, I think the little things always turn into big things. And so uh, moving forward, going into a new conference, uh, going into day four of fall camp, uh, that's always the focus, the little things, because at the end of the day, they turn into big things. You're, I understand the one game at a time mentality. Sure. But before camp, back in the off season, when the schedule came out with a bunch of Big 12 opponents, yeah. where did your eyes stop? 
Uh, I mean, you, you look through it and you're super excited, right? Like, uh, you get to go to a bunch of places, uh, a bunch of cool stadiums to, to see uh, to see Boise State in, at the Smurf turf, right? To 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 uh, go to to Norman and play in Oklahoma, um, to to have West Virginia at home to play in the Bounce House, right? You're super excited about a bunch of different games, um, but one thing that, that that I think I'm excited about is to is uh, Obviously, the first one, right? That's the one that everybody's fired up about. But that's not the one you want to hear, right? You, you, everybody, I'm everybody says the first one. Right? Here, yeah, so, yeah. 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 Um, so I, I'm super excited to to go to Oklahoma and play. I think it's going to be a really, really fun game. That I heard the environment's unbelievable. The stadium's awesome. And um, uh, also, my uh, while I was at Ole Miss, Coach Levy, uh, who came from UCF, went to Ole Miss, coached me there. Um, and so I have a really awesome relationship with Coach Levy. And so to be able to see him again and uh, Coach Holacek uh, and Doobie, one of the guys that, that was at Ole Miss as well, um, when you have relationships with guys, it's awesome to be able to see him again and uh, ultimately compete against him um, because at the end of the day, that's what, that's what we love to do is compete. And so um, that's one that I'm excited about. I'm excited about that one. There's no more, at least for now, more on I-4. You're in a new conference. Who's your rival now? Uh, that's tough. Yeah, I, I don't know, right? I, you I have think, no geographic rival. Yeah, you don't. Um, I feel like we always play a fun game against Cincinnati, right? Mm -hmm. I, in the past couple of years, we've, we've played a cool one against them. Um, that's tough. I, I don't know. I don't know who you who you label as the rival, but um, I would also think, also think Cincinnati would probably look at West Virginia geographically. Sure, so. that's right. And so that's tough. I don't know who you who you circle as the rival, but I think there's going to be a bunch of fun ones for sure. UCF against the world. That's right. Okay. I, indeed, Knights versus the world. Let's do it. You've had a busy summer. I want to go back to the Manning camp. Yeah. What was that experience like? Uh, really cool. I've got, this is my second year to go. Um, that camp is unbelievable, right? To be able to to be around a bunch of awesome uh, quarterbacks, top quarterbacks from around the country, um, and to be able to, to, to have fun with a bunch of kids and teach them the game that we love to do. Um, and I haven't even mentioned yet that you're rubbing elbows with some of the best quarterbacks to ever play the game, right? And so uh, that's a really, really cool experience, my second year going. Um, I'm always learning something because uh, you get really uh, – you have to kind of pinch yourself because you'll find yourself having dinner with Peyton Manning and you're just sitting there talking ball and it's just you, him, and one other guy at the table and you're all just sitting there talking like you've been buddies for a long time and at the when you end up getting up, you're like, wow, that really just happened. Um, but it's a really, really cool experience. Got to learn a lot, make a lot of new buddies um, from different uh, guys in different schools around the country and so it's a really, really cool experience. You've said being young John Rice Pumley, imagining what you would grow up to yeah. be. You just had a camp with kids at yeah. UCF, so yeah. you got to see a lot of those young people that are looking up to you. What's that like to impart what you know? Yeah, uh, really kind of surreal, right? Because I remember being, again, little John Rice, and all I wanted to do was go to a Southern Miss football game uh, or a high school football game at Oak Grove, for that matter, and to, to get somebody's towel or to high-five one of the baseball guys coming off the field. Man, that's all I wanted to do. I thought those guys were the coolest guys in the world. And so now to be kind of in their shoes, uh, I look down, and when I see those those guys running around, those little guys running around, I see little John Rice, right? They they I'm sure they love football, they love baseball, um, they love athletics just like I did. Um, and to be able to kind of switch the roles is kind of really surreal for me, and it's a really cool experience for sure. Some changes on the offensive line. How are you developing chemistry with what's going to be a new center position? Yeah, uh, I think that's uh, it happens every play. Center quarterback exchange. It's a, it's a really really big deal. Um, we've got. Uh, three uh, really, really good centers right now, and, and center quarterback exchange has been really good. It's only day three camp, um, but all three of those guys are super, super talented. Uh, Kittler, Metcalf, and, and Bula are, are studs of human beings as well. They're a ton of fun to be around, um, but I mean, I, I, that's kind of the point guy at the, at the offensive line position, and so you want a, a guy that's going to lead the pack, and um, I think it's really, really good that we have depth, not only at center, um, but all the way across the starting five. We're going to have dudes um, that I think can switch out. And I think we've got probably eight or nine guys that could be starters at a power at a power five school. And so when you have depth like that, it's it's a pretty dangerous weapon. How do you look at that, how dangerous <clears throat> or scary can this offense be when you got guys like Kobe, Javon, yeah. uh, RJ Harvey, yourself, Johnny Richardson, Alex yeah. the list goes on. How scary can this offense be if everything is clicking on all cylinders? Yeah, uh, I think we're 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 gonna be a scary side for sure. Um, I think it starts from the top down with Coach Malzahn and, and Coach Henshaw kind of leading the pack with Coach Hand, coaching the O-line, Coach Hurd and Coach Blackman, um, coaching them all up. Coach Cam Martin, who just got out of playing in SEC ball. I mean, like, 
when you have the coaches to lead the pack that have been there, that done that, that know what it looks like, and to have the personnel behind it that can execute anything that they want to do, um, it's it's pretty scary. Uh, I think if, if defenses are looking at UCF football um, and aren't kind of scared right now, uh, I think they should be pretty soon.